Miguel Indurain this morning getting ready for today's stage nine after his magnificent win in the time trial yesterday. Shamaladeen Abdushaparov, the sprinter who astonished everyone by finishing seventh yesterday. He wears the green points jersey. While Lauren Fignon, whose time trial moved him from 21st to 14th overall, a Frenchman in France on Bastille Day. The cheering, however, is for Greg LeMond, very popular in France because he speaks the language, rides for a French team, and wins the tour. Jean-Francois Bernard, yesterday was a beginning, a rebirth for this once great rider. While for Eric Roykink, it was an end, an end to his streak of time trial wins and to his hopes of leading the race. He told us what went wrong. I was feeling very good still, still at the top of the hill. And I thought after that it's not so difficult anymore, but in the last eight kilometers was a lot of wind. And I didn't, I forced a little bit too much on the last hill, I think. In the last few days, the tour has traversed much of northern France. Today's stage nine takes the riders west from Alençon to Rennes, where the region of Brittany begins. The stage, a hundred miles of smallish hills, a landscape opening out into bigger fields along the way. Shortly after leaving Alençon, Dmitry Konashev pulls alongside Henri Abadie, joining the Frenchman in a two-man breakaway. On a day following a time trial as demanding as yesterday, the peloton might have been expected to set a quiet pace. Once again this year, that is not the case. A group of eight now join the early leaders, swelling the breakaway to ten. None of the overall leaders are in this. group, but sprinters such as Laura Jalabert, Johan Bruniel, Edwin von Hoydunk are here, perhaps thinking ahead to the likelihood of a sprint finish at the end of this short stage. Le Mans there has got a little bit more space around him. You very often find this when you're the yellow jersey of the Tour de France. The ride is a little bit too scared to get close to you because they're always worried about knocking you off, and that is the advantage of being the top man. There is uh, Vignon coming alongside Le Mans there, just to glancing across, Greg having a quick word with him. But somebody does get knocked down, extending the unfortunate streak of injuries we've seen this year. Marino Alonso of Indurain's Benesto team. I don't think this breakaway is going to get picked up again today because the lead is over two and a half minutes now and what glimpses we've had of the main field, there is no reaction as yet. As yet. This is Calcaterra going through, being followed through here now by Thierry Bourguignon and there is a reaction from the bunch. Greg Lamont has moved up to the front and it looks as though the Z team are happy to ride along here. Keep an eye on the big leaders in the main field. So the peloton goes by, headed west on July 14th, France's big national holiday. Nationalism is a powerful force shaping professional bike racing. And through the years, France and French teams have dominated the tour with 36 victories. Belgium is next. Spain has just three. America's three, all by Le Mans. Ireland's single win by Stephen Roach, eliminated from this year's tour early in the race. The peloton in the final miles of today's stage nine, chasing hard. The gap to the break is shrinking steadily. The riders of the break working out their end game strategies. And so now the leaders here are entering the outskirts of Wren, and they're five kilometers or so from the line. And the gap is now down to one minute and 30 seconds. So it's still touch and go, Paul. Well, it is touch and go. I think at 20 kilometers to go when the riders went through Chateau Giron, I would have said that they were going to get caught, but there's been a little bit of a change in the tactics at the back there. The Panasonic riders deciding not to chase anymore, so the gap went back up a little bit for 10 or 15 seconds, and now it's stabilizing at one and a half minutes. Now, there's 10 kilometers to go now, and it's inside the streets of Rennes, and anything can happen, really. I think there's going to be an attack once we go around one or two of these corners, and the team who will have to do all the work is the Toshiba team because they have three men here, plus the fastest sprinter, Laurent Jalabert. And that is why Bernard Vallée, the team manager, is up alongside his Toshiba riders there. And I think, Paul, he's telling one of them they must attack. Well, he will be uh, telling them to watch out for the attacks of the other riders as we go under the banner for five kilometers to go. Ribeiro taking up the back here. Riders still wanting to know from their team managers what the gap is behind because they want to start to 
jostling a little bit for position here, looking for the attack. They don't want to ride as hard as they have been, but always worried about the field coming back from behind. Five kilometres now for the big field. Greg LeMond, as usual, riding at or near the front and keeping out of trouble and the risk of crashing at the back. And the break has shrunk to the point where none of the leaders of the race overall will see their positions change. today while now the brake group is beginning to split up everybody really getting nervous this is a tense time they've all been together as friends up until now for the top all the length the length of time the breakaway has been away they've been working together for one goal and that's to get to the finish in front of the peloton now they become enemies when they have to decide if they can jump away from each other as they come into the finishing straight now they're launching the sprint and ab and and uh, Oh, difficult to see who's leading out here. Looks like Mabiro has pulled away from the front of the bunch in the last few seconds of the race. And he's going like an absolute train. Rabiro has gone off the head of the group. He's never had a stage winner from Brazil in the Tour de France before. And he's gone for it now. He may not be French, but he rides for a French team. And I think he's going to sneak this one right on the line. And Brazil, and there's a turn off of Bastille Day. It's a French team. But is he going to hang on now? As Connie Kemp comes on the left, and the Morris Gallagher in the middle, and right on the line, he gets it. My goodness me! The Peloton, it's race now for 11th place, and they are strung out momentarily with the Belgian Lotto team at the front, 35 miles an hour on the streets of Rennes. We expect Johan Museo, here he goes on the left of our picture now to try and lead them home. And coming at him too is Etienne de Wilder, the winner the other, week, the other day, rather. De Wilder on the right, Museo just takes him. So with Mauro Ribeiro managing to hold on against Lauren Chalabert, he rides into the history books as Brazil's first ever stage winner. Konashev is third. The overall standings remain roughly the same with Le Monde on top and Broikink and the remarkable Abdushaparov just over a minute back. Bunio and Delgado are around four minutes back. Chiapucci was hurt by yesterday's time trial. Andy Hampston is waiting for the mountains. And in the mountain jersey, Belgian's Peter de Klerk. This competition will get serious in the Pyrenees on Thursday. While the green jersey battle, which is more like a war, is led as it has been all week by the Soviet Abdushaparov. The Tour de France, an international event, as Phil Liggett reports.